Good afternoon, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasul al-kareem. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. My name is Tayyib Yunus, and I am really excited to be here today with my family, my wife, my daughters, and all of you this afternoon for a really, really, really special and exciting afternoon. Um, I am the executive director of Obet Helpers, and our team has put together an amazing showcase today really to help bring to life something that really inspired me to want to be an Obet Helper. Um, you hear often about organizations that are trying to solve the hunger problem or you know, uh, help people in need. But it's rare that you run into a group that's actually trying to achieve transformation and achieve it in our lifetime. I'm 40 years old now, and I've grown up hearing about a lot of bad things in the last 100 years. And I, one day I met Unwer, who is the founder of Obat, and he told me about a dream, a dream where, where he's working on and Obat helpers are working on actually helping change the direction of generations such that they're no longer feeling or experiencing poverty. It reminds me of my own parents who came. My father was an orphan, my mother from poverty as well, and somehow they got a chance to come to the United States in the 70s. And it makes me think about, well, my children, alhamdulillah, didn't experience that level of poverty and so what can we do to help all those who come after us or help some people in the world have a better chance to experiencing a better life? And that's what tonight's about. Tonight is about showcasing that difference. And there's some very special guests today, somebody who I met recently who is who's my hero as an Obat helper. His name is Rizwan Samad. And he's, he, 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 every time I speak to him, I feel inspired. I, my heart wakes up and, and I just want to, I just, I just want to learn from him. He's, he's, he's here tonight. We've asked him to walk us through and tell us about his journey and how um, he uh, 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 made this, this transformation as well. We're going to wait a few min more minutes for some other folks to connect. And while we're waiting, our team has put together a few clips to show you while we're waiting for everybody else to join. Stay tuned. Those of you who've joined so far, thank you for coming this afternoon. I'm here joining with my family, my wife and daughters, and we're sitting eagerly waiting for everyone to join. And uh, in the next few moments, we will. There's some, there's some more folks that are joining. We'll, 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 we'll begin in just a few moments.
again, I want to thank everybody for coming this morning or this afternoon. For some of us, it might be a little sooner on the West Coast. For our OBAT helpers, Ramadan Live, we actually have some really special, amazing guests joining us from the ground in Bangladesh. Some young rising stars who have taken an amazing journey, whose lives have been transformed and their families' lives from here on out have been transformed as well. And they're leading the way for many thousands of other youth with your help and with everyone's help, the OBAT helpers. Really excited and, and grateful to be here today with all of you. And I wanna thank our next guest, actually our host, um, Brother Rizwan Summit, who's based out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, I'm based out of Orlando, Florida, Brother Rizwan. Every time I see you, I just have to smile. I mean, I just feel so inspired uh, and encouraged. Uh, your story is remarkable, um, you know, as a volunteer uh, who is leading the rest of us in, in trying to make the world a better place. So please, the floor is all yours. Thank you for being with us today. Okay. Thank you, Tayyab. Um, and thank you, viewers. Uh, this is the Assalamu Alaikum, first of all. Uh, this is the first time in my life I'm, I'm using this, uh, this technology. Uh, even though I live in a techie city in Seattle, but uh, I'm not used to um, this technology. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy, I'm a people person. I go into the hall in a crowd. Uh, I mingle and see my friends and talk to them. Uh, but, you know, the world has changed uh, due to coronavirus. And um, we are prisoners in our homes. Uh, but thank you. Thanks for this technology uh, that uh, uh, we are reaching out to you guys uh, for this great and very, very important cause. Um, I just want to tell you that uh, I joined OBAT eight years ago and uh, met this incredible man, Anwar Khan. And my heart was always there uh, with OBAT. But uh, my life, worldly life was so busy that it never gave me a chance to go to Bangladesh. Um, Anwar Bhai always invited and he always said, Rizwan, you must you must have to come to Bangladesh. But, you know, every day in the morning, I get up and run around till late night like a chicken is head cut off and never can finish my work. Um, and so one day out of blue, me, my wife and daughter were sitting and watching TV. My youngest daughter, Yasmin, just came and, and say, let's go to the Bangladesh. And um, I you know, half-heartedly says yes. Um, and then my wife was keep telling me, don't promise her, don't promise her. Uh, I thought I asked Yasmin, I thought she wanted to go to Iceland. Um, but she said, oh, let's go to Bangladesh. I want to go see the camp. And um, and I still was, I, even though I told her that I wanted to go to see the, to go to Bangladesh, but I, I knew that I can't, I'm so busy. Um, and uh, she's keep reminding me, she's keep reminding me. And I accidentally asked her, why don't you ask your friend Alsa to go to Bangladesh? I thought maybe she, her friend will say no, and this whole idea will vanish. And then I got the bombshell. Yasmin say, Alsa, she wants to go too. I say, oh my God. So literally, literally in the last minute, when uh, she gave me the time and day that she, the day off from these young kids uh, decide, you know, they have a day off from this day to that day. Uh, all my life, I lived in a spur of the moment. I just decide and go. Now I have a schedule in front of me and I had to go to Bangladesh. So I got panic and I started making a reservation. I made the booking. And, you know, I'll be very honest. <laughs> <coughs> That's the best present my daughter gave it to me. That she convinced me 
to go to Bangladesh. And uh, my wife supported and uh, initiated behind that. So I give uh, this trip to Bangladesh credit to my daughter. And what I saw and what I experienced, it changed my life. And I will talk to you a little bit later about my trip and my experience, which made me, change me as a different person, different man. My thinking is changed. Basically, my whole life has changed. So without any further ado, I'm going to invite my beautiful daughter, Yasmin Samad, to say a few words. She, she accompanied me to Bangladesh camp, and she is here. Yasmin, come on, beta, sit down. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Yasmin, like my dad just introduced me. Um, so I, so yeah, let's just start. So Bangladesh is probably one of the most beautifully chaotic countries I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, I didn't really know what to expect going into this. Uh, I mean, people warned me about the traffic. That was the only thing I knew and they were so bright. Um, it's the worst, it's the worst. Um, but other than that, I didn't know exactly what to expect, what I was really getting myself into, especially when I was telling my dad um, that they, uh, that I, that I was interested in going. Um, maybe over the past, maybe 10 years, uh, we've been going to Obet fundraisers. Um, and, you know, we hear about like their, their mission of empowerment and um, for these displaced people and how, um, <laughs> for these displaced people and um, how Obet is helping them create, uh, provide resources for them to create a better, uh, better life for themselves. Um, but hearing about it is very different compared to actually seeing um, the kind of impact that they are actually having on the, in this community. Um, it was probably one of the most humbling and amazing experiences that I've, I've had. Um, so specifically, I wanted to talk about um, the Obet organization and what they're doing with education. Um, so every student that we met there was so enthusiastic to learn and they're always excited to show their, their skills. So the amount of kids that came up to me just to say hello, like I know English, um, I want to be a, a doctor, I wanna be an engineer, all this stuff, it was, amazing. Um, I grew up in Seattle, Washington. Um, I remember growing up, no one was excited to go to school. I mean, even as I got older, high school, I'm like, I'm still not excited to go to school. And here are these, these little kids that they, this is what they look forward to. Um, and so um, there's a, a girl who I remember meeting in Chittagong and um, Obet has a like a Khan Academy program. And during this time, they were, uh, this girl was learning how to do Java, JavaScript. Um, and I went up to her and I was kind of like watching what she was doing. And I told her I had no idea what the heck it was going on. I everything that she was typing was just complete gibberish. And she started laughing at me because I didn't know, um, which was so funny. And it, it, it kind of just goes back to what my dad was saying. Like we, like Seattle is a very techie city and here I am, I grew up here. Um, and this is something I didn't really have. This is, I didn't have access to when I was growing up. Um, slowly schools are incorporating it into their program, like a, into their school system. But it's something that a lot of, Americans will not have that skill. They, they won't have that opportunity to learn. And here, DACA and Chittagong, they are getting that opportunity. And that's because of um, Obet's helpers. Um, and so I wanted to um, lastly just talk about like all the amazing people that I met. So um, 
all the volunteers, I believe a majority came from these OVED schools. They're getting a higher education, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree. They're going on being pharmacists, chemists. Um, and it's so inspiring because here uh, they, they pretty much grew up with barely anything. And yet they're going beyond uh, above and beyond in um, getting these really intense degrees. And then they're going home again to pretty much nothing. And one of the most common things that they all told me was it, they wouldn't have been able to do any of it without the help of this organization. Um, and so that was kind of my experience in a very quick nutshell. It's very hard to talk about um, the the days that we spent there um, and pretty much in, in a span of like a couple of minutes, um, I could talk for hours about it. Um, and it's very hard to even talk about this organization with with pretty much any justice um, uh, because you just kind of have to see it to see the kind of impact that they're having on these people. Um, so I, so yeah, that was, kind of what, that's kind of my story. Um, but I want to introduce um, one of my really good friends. Um, she came with us, her name is Elsa. She decided to come even though this was like a very impulsive <laughs> trip and she was very uh, happy to join. Um, and so she's someone that we both completed our master's in nutrition together at USC. She's someone who I trust 100% my life with and I was very excited for her to come and for her to even share her experience and her own um, expertise being there with uh, with our family as well as seeing Bangladesh as its you know entirety. So um, Elsa. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, like Yasmin said, my name is Elsa Carrillo. I am a dietitian here. I live in Fresno, California and I was very, very honored and super excited when Yasmin and her family invited me um, to go with them to Bangladesh. Uh, and learn about Obot Helpers. I uh, honestly did not know uh, what Obot Helpers was, uh, you know, before going to Bangladesh. But once I got there and I was able to see the impact of their work, I was like literally blown away. Obot Helpers is they. I don't think they even realize the impact that they they are having on an entire population. I mean, the incredible work that the volunteers do, that um, everyone, you know, from the top all the way down to the volunteers, all the people who, um, who all the partners that they have. Um, I mean, these people are literally changing the lives of, um, you know, the, the people who live in these camps for the better, of course. Um, their, their impact and the support that they're giving the youth is incredible. Um, Obat is transforming their lives in the way that they are empowering them um, to empower themselves. Um, all these young people from the camps, what I kept hearing over and over again is, you know, um, they're just looking for the opportunity uh, to better themselves. That's all people want is the opportunity to um, to basic human rights, essentially, right? To the right to have education, to the right to be able to, you know, provide for their, themselves and their families. And Obat, with their support, is doing this. Um, like Yasmin mentioned, you know, Obat is um, giving people the opportunity to educate themselves. And that education is priceless. Um, you know, before uh, Obat got there, many people didn't receive or didn't get to, uh, an opportunity to finish their education. And now um, a lot of the youth from the camps are not only completed their education, but they're moving on to, you know, finishing high school, fish, finishing university, getting their master's degrees. Um, we're going to hear later on from, you know, two of the most inspiring youth that came from the camps, which one is now a doctor, another one is now in pharmacy school or has completed her pharmacy school. So it's like, you know, where they're doing great things. And what's even um, what's even better about that is that uh, the youth are going back and they're investing in their communities. 
So it's like a trickle effect. It's just incredible that the work that they do. And like Yasmin said, you really um, don't, you, you really won't appreciate, or you, it's hard to appreciate from afar, but when you're there and you're seeing the, how people's lives has literally transformed for the better and how um, their families' lives are transforming for the better because the students were able to complete their education. It's just incredible, you know? And um, I was just truly inspired by everyone there, like I said before, from um, all the way from Anwar and his incredible, you know, tenacity to um, get this whole organization up and running and to the youth who continue to run it and who are just amazing, intelligent um, young people who just want the opportunity to better themselves and to be able to provide for their families um, and have just basic rights. And that's all they're doing. And they're doing a great job. But of course, um, you know, none of this would be possible without the support that Obat has been able to grant them. Um, and just um, briefly, like I have uh, also been in the Peace Corps. I've worked uh, two years in um, Africa. And um, one of the things that really resonates with me um, is is the education part because my family, a war family of immigrants, it came from Mexico and uh, well, my parents came from Mexico. And so um, one of the things that, that also was very important for them was education because my parents also didn't get the opportunity to get an education um, when they lived in Mexico. And so when our family immigrated to um, the United States, one of the most important things that my parents always talked about, uh, talked to us about and instilled in us was the benefit of getting an education and um, how when you receive an education, you can, you know, be able to go far and be able to provide for yourself and help your family and give back. And so that really resonates with me when I saw that that's exactly what's happening um, with the youth in, um, in Dhaka and Chittagong and all the camps uh, where Oba is touching lives. And so um, I'm just incredibly proud of everyone and especially the youth and their resiliency. Um, all I can say is please, please help Oba in continuing supporting these amazing youth and also the, the women, um, the older women also in the camps. I mean, everyone is just so amazing. And please, please help us continue supporting their great work. And now I'm going to send it back to Rezwan. Thank you, Elsa. Now I'm going to introduce you the man who disrupted my life in a good way. You know, I met, as I mentioned, Anwar Bhai over eight years ago, and I was keep promising him to go to Bangladesh. And I have been supporting him for over the eight years. But he was adamant about that I must visit Bangladesh. And I didn't know that what his plan was. His plan was to totally and completely capture my mind and my soul. And he did it. And with my, I don't know, maybe he made a phone call to Yasmin. I don't know. I'll find out. But this amazing man, what I saw over there, the children, the way they love him. When he travels, he stays in relatives' homes. He stays in Obat helpers quarters. He doesn't stay in hotels and other places. He saved penny penny. And every penny he spent on Obat's children. You know, I always, always wanted to meet Abdul Sattar Evi. He's one of my favorite men. But unfortunately, I was not able to meet with him. And he died. But thank God, I get to know another Abdul Sattar Idi in the name of Anwar Khan. So my dear friends, my viewers, please meet 
this amazing, beautiful human being, Anwar Khan. Anwar Bhai, please take the floor. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Rizwan. <clears throat> I have no word to say you thank you on every stage of our bad helpers. When we are growing, when we are walking, you teach us how to run. When we are running, you teach us how to compete. But I'm very humble that uh, you said a lot of good word for me. I'm not that capable. I'm not that good. I'm just a servant and I'm providing some services. May Allah accept our deed, our services. And I just want to add one quick comment before I start my story that I will not take credits whatever I'm doing today. It looks like the Allah put us on this work to do something good for these people and friends like you and others to stand besides me. So it was a possible journey for me. For those people who are new here today, I just want to share one quick thing and the background of Obad that how we started. It is. It was 2004, a hot summer day. I was <clears throat> laying on my couch watching TV. My wife brought me a <clears throat> quarterly journal from ISNA, Islamic Society of North America. His name is Horizon. And she pulled me out an article and told me to read it. When I started reading the article, I was very shocked. The article was written by a PhD doctor, Sayyid Ismail from Virginia. He uh, was working for NASA and he went to Bangladesh. And during his visit to Bangladesh, he visited some of the camps. And when he was describing the camps problem issues, the way the people are living there, I was very shocked. The reason I was shocked and I was feeling bad is not only that this is a humanitarian issue, one of the reasons that I was used to live in that part of the country. But I was so fortunate that uh, I came back from there to Karachi. And then after a couple of years, when I complete my graduation from NAD Engineering University, we moved to United States in early 90s. And Alhamdulillah, I was working for a very <coughs> renowned automotive company. I was thinking that Allah has blessed us so much. We could be a part of the camp people. Our kids can be getting <coughs> growing there in the camps. I sat down with my family, I talked to them. And then immediately we decided that we have to do something because we have to thanks to Allah for all his blessing, for all his kindness, <coughs> he gave it to us. So we decided to do something. So I actually fly back to Bangladesh and <coughs> some of my friend and family collected some fun. It is a, almost $1,750 was in my pocket. And initially we planned to sponsor a family. When I was there in Bangladesh, I was looking at different camps. I was going through uh, different cities, meeting different peoples. It was very difficult for me to adopt the family or respond to the family, but every family was <clears throat> more looking more deserving for me. But <clears throat> as I mentioned you earlier, that maybe Allah has a different uh, thought for me in his mind. So I went back to the country that is called Rangpur. And in Rangpur, I was walking in the camp. There was a small street where some kids are standing in front of the street. 
and they told me that the street is closed. When I asked them why, in Urdu, they told me that Amma log naha rahi hai. Mothers are taking shower. I didn't understand. I didn't realize it. What does this mean? I asked one of my friends who was with me. He told me that since there is no privacy bathroom, there's only one hand pump in the street, in this street. So when the woman has to take shower, they actually close the street by putting kids on both ends of the street so they can take bath. Actually, this changed everything around me. I was sent down on the side of the street. I was thinking about the, the life we are living in the United States and comparing the life with the people in the camps. So I realized that why don't we should do something that can help all these kids and families and the women. So I decided to build a bathroom in that uh, in that street where the the women can take the shower. And I was very fortunate that uh, I was able to build the bathroom from the same amount of money what we have in my pocket. And as soon as we decided and finalized things. There are a couple of women came to see me and talk to me. And they were asking and telling me a lot of uh, blessings. One woman, she hugged me. She started uh, talking to me. And I told her, that, Mother, I'm not doing anything very big. This is a small thing. She told me that I'm, I'm just tell in Urdu. She told me that you don't know what you're doing. हम लोगों की बरसों से ख्वाहिश थी कि अल्लाह ताला कोई ऐसी जगह देता जहां हम इज्जत से नाना धोना कर सकते माय सन यू डोंट नो व्हाट यू आर डूइंग वी हैव अ ड्रीम फॉर इयर्स दैट वी शुड हैव अ प्लेस वेयर वी कैन टेक बाथ एंड शावर डिग्निटी एंड प्राइड सो व्हाइल यू आर डूइंग दिस व्हाट डोंट यू हेल्प अस इन सम अदर एरियाज एंड शी शी होल्ड माय हैंड एंड स्टार्ट वॉकिंग थ्रू द कैंप एंड शी वाज टेलिंग मी द स्टोरीज of the bathrooms, of the <coughs> of the latrines, toilets, and open sewage. So there are there are millions of problems, issues, drinking water. I'm just taking all the notes in my diary because at that time I have no clue, I have no dream, I have no vision that I am going to do something that can really help and change the people's life. But my my creator, Allah, has something uh, about, <coughs> about me that how we should move forward and how we should do. So making the story short, when I come, came back to the United States, I actually shared my thoughts to my friends who are from my energy engineering university, and also my, my younger brother, Dr. Rizwan, he's from dog, his dog graduate, he shared the information with his fellows. And alhamdulillah, people started joining hand with us. And just I want to give you a one summary that now, uh, I have a dream. And I can tell you that <coughs> dream has power. It inspires you. It empowers you. And the dream I have was basically to break the, po the poverty cycle, to educate them, to empower them, to build the capacity. And alhamdulillah, we are moving forward towards the dream. Thousands and thousands of students are in our education system. And, and I think we'll, we'll talk a little bit more on different issues. But just as a summary, that the journey we started with just $1,750. Alhamdulillah, now our budget is almost around $1.5 million. And we are helping thousands and thousands of families in different parts. But our focus are education and education. 
So before I go further, I want to give you a special surprise today. And this surprise is maybe it will just it will be coming soon. It is created by Zach Rockwood, created this uh, video. Please watch with us. The first time I visited the Bihari camps was back in 2013 with a nonprofit called Obat Helpers. The experience was pretty shocking. There was trash all over the streets, the sewers were just kind of open, and you'd see young kids working at the shops. Whole families of six, seven, eight people would all be living in a single room. When I talked to them, they were really just struggling to survive. It was completely heartbreaking. It was seven years later before I finally went back, and what I saw this time shocked me again. There wasn't any trash on the streets anymore. The sewers had all been closed up. All the kids were in school. And there was something else. The people were different. They had hope. There was this boy that I had met at one of the Obat schools my first time there, Abdul Kashem. He had wanted to be a doctor, but there had never been a doctor from the camps. It seemed like this impossible dream. But seven years later, I go into this hospital, and I see a man with a full beard and a stethoscope, and it's him. He's a doctor. And I finally start to understand how important that dream he had really was. How it allowed him to do the impossible. And that's what Obed is doing. They're giving people dreams. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Uh, the boy just you saw uh, that was me. I am Muhammad Abul Kashem. Now I'm a doctor. Uh, I have completed my MBBS from Rangpur Medical College and Hospital. And uh, I'm going to tell my journey how uh, a boy from a camp became a doctor. I live in Ispahani camp number two in the city of Rangpur, Bangladesh. My father, Muhammad Hafiz, is a night security guard. My mother, Kamrun Nahar, is a housewife. We are three brothers and a sister. All of them are married. Uh, we have a big family of 10 members. But uh, unfortunately, none of them could continue their studies. Uh, my big brother is a mechanic. Uh, you know, uh, he repairs uh, some dynamo machine on the uh, vehicles. Uh, my another brother is uh, a tailor. And because uh, uh, they couldn't continue their study, uh, the reason is that uh, in Bangladesh, uh, up to grade six, up to grade five, it is full free by the government. Uh, so literally we have no difficulties uh, to complete that, but the real difficulties come just after that. Uh, in grade six, we need a lot of money for uh, you know, admission fee, books, uniform, uh, monthly fee, private tuition, and there is a situation in the camps that we are struggling every day for our basic amenities. We have uh, no idea that uh, can we eat tomorrow or not. Because you know, all the people that are here are doing such jobs that doesn't provide them what is in future. What are they going to do? You know, the room that I am still uh, sitting here, it is just 12 by 10 feet room. 
and in this room we have to decide five six or seven members in the family we are struggling everywhere there are about 400 families in this camp and you know there are only 25 to 30 toilets to use for us so what a miserable condition that we are leading in this situation if we are thinking of uh, spending extra money for education this is just like a dream and from my childhood i wanted that no we should we should be get out of here we don't want this cry we don't want this madness we don't want this sadness but every time i was thinking that how could i do that i was also inspired that yes education may improve these conditions but the problem that happened with my brothers and my sisters uh, that was about to happen with me also i was maybe also dropping out uh, from education but alhamdulillah i always said that it's a miracle that allah has sent the obeyed helpers just as his special mercy a special gift because you know when i was in grade 6 and that was in 2005 and Omar just started his journey in 2005. I always think that if it was one year late, I will be dropped out maybe two. But Alhamdulillah, our helpers chose a lot of students and I was one of them. And from then, I was never worried about my education fee, exam fee, or any educational expenses. And when I first met an Oracle sir, he asked me, what do you want to be? I said, sir, I want to be a doctor without any hesitation, without any fear, because, you know, Abart was giving not only financial support, it was not only a financial support, it was a motivation, it was a courage, it was an inspiration for us that yes, someone is behind us. Yes, we have got someone. My parents were also supporting me. And I was going through my education. Everything was going great. I was cutting good figures in the exams. In 2010, I appeared in SSC examination and in 2012 I appeared uh, in HSC board exam and I did brilliant result on there. There was GPA 5, Golden A plus. And then the final round that was of my dream that is medical admission test exam. And for that exam, for the preparation, I also needed a lot of money. But thank God Obeit was there. I was blessed. They all managed. Uh, so the final day when I heard my news that I was among 92,000 students, my position was 1,806. And my eyes were full of tears as well as my parents. Because that was not only my dream. That was the dream of my parents. That was the dream of a bad helpers. That was the dream of my community. And yes, indeed, that was a great success. Because I was the first doctor from not only my camp or Rangpur, but from this whole community in the Bangladesh. I was the first doctor. So it's a great achievement. It was not only my success. It was not only my achievement, I think. Because there is a huge contribution of a battle person.
because if obet was not there i will not be here today in front of you i had no name i had no title before my name as a doctor so alhamdulillah obet helpers has helped me in every stage of my life it not only changed my life but my family my entire community a lot of generation that are coming in future inshallah and i can the most important thing that i think about has done in this uh, last 15 years it has changed our attitude it has changed the attitude of our guardian of our, our community people because uh, you know 20 years ago if i i would say that i want to be a doctor people will laugh at me that you guys cannot pass the board exams and and you are you are saying that uh, you will be a doctor is it funny are you kidding with us but yes now people know that students from camp they can be also doctor they can be engineer they can be pharmacist they can be anywhere in the top position of bangladesh not only bangladesh in the whole world so there are i don't have any words to thank obet helpers but i just pray for them that may only may allah uh, can give the best return to them in this life and the after life that is uh, all of my story please pray for me so that i can help my community and our life will be changed inshallah that's all from my story thank you I think uh, Anwar Bhai is going to introduce the next person. Uh, sorry, I was I was talking to I was on mute. Thank you, Abul Qasim. Thank you so much for your story. I really appreciate, and we are proud to see the kids like you who fulfill not only their dream. but you created a hope in all of us that things will not be the same things will change inshallah one day and you are those one of those change makers i just want to add one quick comment about abul qasim that we normally help our kids and youth on different soft skills also like leadership training problem solving decision making a lot of the, lot of those things and alhamdulillah abul qasim is one of the leader who normally talks to the kids he take classes he spend times with the youth and he tell them that if i can do you can do so he he actually show them and inspire them that if you think something that is possible and alhamdulillah i'm proud to say that abul qasim you are a great leader you are our future and you are going to make a difference in many more lives to come thank you so much thank you sir keep me in your prayers thank you abul qasim so now i i just want to continue the success stories and i can bring you many stories what are our achievement we have done so far 
But uh, today, actually, we are mainly focusing on education, focusing on capacity building, fo focusing on the change in the lives that is making a difference and breaking the poverty cycle. So I met one young kid in Rangpur, city of Rangpur. And his father was also working as a night guard. And he was very smart young man. He was in grade eight at that time. And we actually start working with him and hold his hand. And Alhamdulillah, today he has completed his master's from Dhaka University. And Dhaka University is one of the best university in the Asia. It's considered as anywhere you can compare it to the Harvard University in the United States. So I just want to introduce Noshad. Noshad is also one of my stars, so, one of my heroes, so one of my so, dream so, maker. So, Noshad, please share with us. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. This is Noshad from New Relief Camp, Rangpur, Bangladesh. Actually, my Oba journey with Obat started uh, from 2005 or 6 when I was a student of grade uh, 7. We have uh, almost 200 families in our camp and it was uh, only 3 or 4 of us who could go to school and the rest of the children actually went uh, to deep different workplaces and we have 10 members in our family and my father was a day laborer and was the only earning member of our family so it was getting very difficult for my father to bear my educational expenses with maintaining a large family so I had to stop going to school for some days and I think I might not complete or continue my study anymore. So I just um, cried whole night for several days that I can't continue my study anymore. I had dreams to continue my study to do something because I saw life in the camp. We live in, in a camp where there is a room that is 10 feet by 10 feet and we used to sleep six, seven members of our family in a single room. So I did not want to continue the life in that way. Every day I start my day by giving a large cereal to the toilets. So it was like, no, I will not lead my life in the, this way but there was no way how can i change my life the only way was education which was going to be stopped then one day our anwar sir visited our camp and told us anyone who wants to study you can go to school i will pay for you that one sentence changed my life actually I started going to school again and in 2007 I got the chance to study in the best school in our city by pa passing the entrance exam obtaining first position then I continued my hard work every time I lose hope I used to talk to Anwar sir he always inspired me, not only financially, but with his generous talks, every time he inspired. In 2009, when I 
appear for the secondary school exam that is after grade 10 which is a public public exam i got golden a plus that is gpa 5 and alhamdulillah i obtained 128th position among almost 300000 students in 2011 in the higher secondary exam that is after grade 12 i again got the best result that is gpa 5 and this time i did better mashallah this time i obtained third position among 180000 students then i started working a lot more and i appeared for the entrance exam in one of the best universities of not only in bangladesh that is in asia that is dhaka university i got chance to study there by competing with almost 85000 students and only 1500 of us could pass so it was a blessing for me that i got chance to study in a university where i could not even think of then i continued my hard work and in recently i have passed my graduation and post graduation in chemistry from dhaka university so it was like a dream for me i still can't believe a boy who wants to live with 10 7 10 members in a single house can go to dhaka university and can go to the labs can work with the researchers it it is still a dream it it feels like i am in my dream now but alhamdulillah what i am today that is not my success that is because of abad and that when i mention abad that is because of anwar sir and all the donors who supported me throughout my whole journey after passing graduation i was thinking like okay i am now a graduate i can do something in my life but what about my community still they are in problems how can i help them i searched a lot and i think if i can be a top level civil servant then it will be very easy for me to serve them in various ways then i started dreaming to be a district magistrate or district collector to be a top level government summit from, from where i can serve my community in the best level and i appeared for the civil service exam where 400000 students were fighting for only 500 seats 400000 students were fighting for only 5000 seats sorry 500 seats so i was very fear how can i come across but alhamdulillah i have successfully passed the first two step and i am at the top one 10000 now and preparing for the last step and alhamdulillah if allah has the blessings i will surely be at the top inshallah so this was a short journey but the impact of abat if you if anyone had a visit in the camps before and if he comes now to the camp he can see the impact of abat earlier if you ask a child what you would like to be he would definitely say i would like to be a barber i would like to be a rickshaw puller or i would like to be a day laborer because we have seen our fathers and brothers doing all this we don't know about doctors engineers and others so how can i we, we dream for that but now things have changed if you go to the camps now if you ask a boy a child what you would like to be 
Now, they will definitely say, I would like to be a graduate. I would like to be a doctor or an engineer or a teacher or a banker. And this is the impact of a bat. The most appreciable impact of a bat is that now we can dream. And we can dream big. And a bat is helping and supporting us to fulfill our dreams and dreams of our community. So you all will be very glad to know that recently we have been moved out from the camps. This is the dream I had in my childhood. And I like to move out let, let move out all the families from the camp. There will be no miserable life. That is my dream. And the best part of Abat is they are doing it in the great way. So this is the impact of Abat in our family. And inshallah, we will, we will successfully fulfill our dreams. And thank you to the all Abat helpers Anwar sir and all the supporters of Abat, please, please help Abat changing our life, changing and adding values to our lives and the lives of the community of a miserable, miserable and forgotten people of Bangladesh. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. My dear brothers and sisters, you just heard two amazing young men, Dr. Abu and Noshad, their story. And just because of you, these guys fulfilled their dream and they got out of the camp. And I will be always thankful to Anwar Khan to getting me involved to part of his journey. I didn't even realize what I was getting into it. A lot of times, you know, I'm a businessman. When I do business, I know what I'm getting into it. But I had no foggy, I didn't even have a foggiest idea what he's getting me into it. When I landed in Bangladesh, we were tired, long journey. He was waiting for us outside with this young kid who I knew over the phone. Took 13 hour bus ride to just to welcome me. <laughs> I was so happy. I told Anwar Bai, let's go to the camp. Jesse, Yasmin, Alsa, even though they were all tired, but they were all anxious to go to the camp. We start visiting camps. And what I saw, what I saw, it just, I cannot explain it to you. What I saw, I just cannot explain it to you. I saw long, sad faces looking at me. And we were taking pictures and talking to people. And then I realized that these women are thinking that here's another visitor taking pictures and he's gonna leave and nothing will change. But I was so numb looking at these women's, I didn't even know what to expect. Later, all these young students visited and honored us where I met 
Noshad, and other individuals. And I saw amazing things. These kids were talking in English. I was worrying about my wife and daughter because they don't speak Urdu. But they all start talking. And also, obviously, Elsa, she doesn't speak Urdu. They all start talking in English. And I met this amazing young lady with the name of Dilruba. And if Dilruba is on line, I would like to invite her so she can say a few words. You know, this young, amazing girl, Dilruba, became a pharmacist. So please listen to Dilruba Jaman. Dilruba, floor is yes, yours. Sir. Thank Please. you so much. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, my name is Dilruba Zaman. I am a graduate and also a registered pharmacist now. I have completed my Bachelor of Pharmacy last 2019 from University of Asia Pacific. And now I'm enrolling my master's in uh, State University of Bangladesh. Uh, actually, uh, this is a dream for me. Um, it is not. It was not possible to complete this journey from a uh, camp girl to become a pharmacist. It was not easy. It was not impossible without the kind support of Obed. Actually, I must say that this. Uh, my father has a problem in his right leg. So that's why uh, he doesn't work uh, uh, in any um, good place or earn um, enough money for us. So that's why he's running a small tea stall. Uh, we are uh, six members in our family. So it was quite difficult for my father to continue our studies in a good way where the basic needs thinking of basic needs in a camp it is uh, possible where we dreaming about our education really it was a uh, it was like a dream when i was a student of grade 10 i thought that now it's time to stop my academic career because uh, i didn't see any way to continue my study. I uh, cried a lot in front of my parents um, that what should I do? Um, is it uh, the end of my academic career? But my father didn't lose hope. He always tell me, told me that um, one day will come, you will be a, um, a good um, graduate person inshallah so i uh, try try i was not uh, lose my hope i i was trying then uh, the obey helpers anwar sir came to my life as a blessing sir uh, give give me hope sir believe in me that i can do then i started a new way I studied a lot. I got golden GPA 5 in my SSC, which is secondary school certificate exam. And uh, it was the first golden GPA 5 in the OBE tutoring center, Dhaka. And uh, I also got GPA 5 in my higher secondary school certificate exam, board exam. Then the main uh, problem was arise. Uh, I was uh, appearing uh, for the medical examination, but for the uh, for some four months I couldn't um, do it happen. Um, so I was thinking that uh, I should do something new 
i should uh, thinking some uh, new uh, subject for me because the i cannot stop here i i cannot stop here then i think that i should go in a pharmaceutical field because uh, it's the more or less um, like a medical field then again i started uh, my journey and uh, the person who is believing me is anwar sir who support me assure me he told me that go ahead i will always with you our obed family will always with you you have to study a lot you have to do a great job in your pharmaceutical line then i started my journey and uh, i studied a lot and uh, i got a scholarship in 2014 to 2019 for completing my bachelor of pharmacy and then i started my masters last year sir i can uh, say that oh uh, when i was a student of uh, class 10 uh, I, i used to live in a camp you know 10 or 10 to 8 feet small house life was so miserable for me so miserable because uh, we need to uh, study a lot we need to study uh, a good place we need a good place for the study but we didn't get this opportunity uh because uh, the camp life was so miserable but now we came out of this situation just because of our education this helps me a lot um uh, sir uh, now i can proudly say that i am a graduate pharmacist uh in my entire camp uh where i used to live i am the only person who complete her bachelor degree who enrolling his her uh, master degree also so it means a lot for me uh, without the kind support of obet i cannot came in this point where i am now so that is my journey and i would like to thank the entire obed family the supporters the donors and of course anwar sir who always motivated us who always give a, a motivation inspiration so now we are capable to dream big now we capable to show but to our next generations who always um, thinking about their educational life so um sir uh i would like to add one thing more so once upon a time uh, we can see that um, in our camps only we can see uh, people are butchers barbers rickshaw pullers but now the situation is changed uh, because of the obet uh we can uh, see that we have now a doctor now we have a pharmacist we have a chemist the students who is uh, approaching in the cadets there we have a computer engineers also so it's a, a big achievement for us as well as our obed family because it is not possible without your support uh, it was quite difficult for us it was quite difficult for us i always tell i always uh, tell myself that now it's our time to um, do something for our community and uh, now my dream is to become a good pharmacist working in a good renowned industry and helping my communities sir um, by seeing the activities of obed i learned one thing that if we uh, 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 give um, helping to show uh, helping to 
show people uh, to see they are doing big they definitely go will go a long way so now i started uh, to give tuitions uh, free of cost the camp students whenever i get time i approach my friends to collect some donations for my students for my camp people i try i try i will i tried i will try so that is my uh, journey and uh, i definitely uh, say that without the help of obet without the kind support of obet i cannot came this point i can uh, i cannot make this uh, journey easy uh, it was uh, obet played a huge role for changing my life now i came out from the camp i can live a good life but whenever i look back uh, in my camp people they are still living in a very bad situation they need your support sir um, like us if you give uh, a share shed of your hands in our more students they will definitely do a best their best they will do they will make a good uh, they will uh, become a doctor engineer pharmacists like us so it's my request it's my um, approach sir please um, uh, come for come forward uh, like uh, you give us opportunity uh, create more opportunities for our next generations that they can come, uh, fulfill their dreams they can come out this situation because the situation still not is good sir in camps and uh, we the new stars of obet trying our best to do something for our community with our own fields by the support of our uh, knowledge our um, uh, what what can i say uh, our uh, good deeds uh, we definitely do a great thing inshallah in future so we just need your help sir we just need your support as you do uh, as you did in the in past with us so that's it sir and uh, again thank you so much sir uh we still trying we still trying to improve ourselves still trying to improve the uh, situation of our communities because we can see the we we saw the miserable lives we saw the conditions of our educational career uh, it was not easier for us so i just pray and i uh, approach you sir please do more for our stu our students because uh, i have been teaching from last 5 years in the obed tutoring center dhaka now i am the senior teacher of there and i every day i saw the condition of their uh, living system sir they have lot of dreams lot of dreams but they didn't get, they uh, didn't get the opportunity sir like us they just need a opportunity to shine sir dilruba really yes sir dilruba we will we will we will not let you down we will not let you down you know yes, sir. there are a lot of, lot of my friends are watching and inshallah we will not let you down we will not let obad down we will not let my friend anwar khan down we will do whatever we can you know and the way you guys have been talking it just moved me again and again so i'm publicly announcing that i will not let you guys down no matter what and you know my community is great my friends are great and they will not let us down so i seen it with my two eyes you know and your message is resonating with the people and is just going into my heart and you know it's, it's all over again just seeing you 
live on the screen and Noshad and Abu and listening to their stories is pounding in my heart. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure all my friends who are watching, they appreciate you coming out and talking to them. And we will not let Obad down and just like all you guys say, don't let Anwar gone down. No, we won't let him down. My dear friends, I just got so emotional and I I didn't even let Dilraba finish. But we have been listening to them. And I, as I said, you know, I'm a different person, different human being after taking a trip from Bangladesh. These kids are amazing, unbelievable. You know, I get close to them. I talk to them regularly. I even offered them money sometimes. I tell them, listen, tell me if, if you guys need something, you don't have to call Anwar Bhai Obad. You know what they say? You know what they say? Say, sir, no, no, we are okay. Just please don't leave Anwar Khan. Don't leave Obat. You know, they have a sense of community. They realize. When I was traveling one camp to another camp, I see nothing but misery in older people's face. They were just sad. The smell, horrible smell, long sad faces, long line for water. You know, that amazing part. Nobody, nobody, Ask me for money. Nobody asked for money. I was in a camp. This woman, 75-year-old lady, Saira Bano, was living underneath of the stairs. She was cooking in there, and with the smoke, the whole little area by four by six area was black. So we say, let's fix her area. She said, why do you want to spend money here? Give it to the young people. I wanted to give her some money, but she refused to take it. I went to this dilapidated building on the third floor. Women came to me and they say, Beta, you know, can you make one toilet here? So I promised, I said, yes, we're going to make the toilet. But later on, we could not make a toilet on that building. Because people say, if we cannot even put one nail on the building, because the building is so dilapidated that if you try to fix it, it might collapse. You know, they are living in a horrible, horrible condition. One place to another place. You see, but children have a hope. Their hope is alive. You know, my friends, usually I can have an eye contact with you guys in a hall. And because you guys always supported me. Now, but today, I cannot have eye contact with you. But if you are watching, but if you are watching, and if you heard these stories about these young, there are many more stories. Please open your wallet. Open your wallet. We are living in a, one of the richest city in the world, richest country in the world. You know, I requested, I've been texting and calling my friends. 
and they start donating some money because they might get paranoid that if they will hear Rizwan more, they might have to give more. So my friends, if you already donated, donate again. Because your wealth will never decrease by giving it. Your wealth will not going to be decreased. I swear to you, if you go there, if you want to give 5,000, you will give 50,000. Because you cannot bear the pain of these people living. I was there. I saw it with my own two eyes. In a little room, six by eight, five or six people living. The young girl I asked, what are you doing? She was making envelopes so she can make 100 taka, literally $1 a day. She quit a school. After fifth grade, she was only 17. You know, we do everything for our children. Yes, we might have to cut a little bit here and there. But we don't, our kids and ourselves, we don't have to think at night. When we have to go to the toilet, toilet is way outside. And those toilets are... I don't want to describe you. I went to Chittagong. There is a school called Sardar Bahadur School. It's been given the name of late for Ayub Khan's brother. Each class, one class has more than 100 people live in there. And divided. The school has total over 4,000 people are living in. And they have a tent toilet outside. They born, they grew up, and then they die. I went to this camp in Geneva camp. The alley was so tight. And one time only one person can come in and out. So I ask a question, what happens if somebody dies? My dear brother and sister, you know, we are living in a lavish world. I cannot even explain it to you. They are at the bottom of the pit and we are all the way to the top. If we can share our wealth a little bit, tiny bit, for these underprivileged children, these underprivileged people, Allah will reward us 10 times more. And God knows more. There's some of you might would have get stuck in Bangladesh if they wouldn't migrate it from Bangladesh to Pakistan and then Pakistan to America. Just think of it for a moment. You could have been one of those people if you would have been stuck over there. Allah puts you in a position that you can give today. And if you miss this opportunity, I don't have a word for you. I promise myself I won't. I'll do whatever I can. I have unconditional support of my wife and kids. You know, the joy of giving is I cannot describe you. That's the best vacation I ever took in my life. I'm in a travel business. I travel exotic places. But this is the best trip of my life. The people give so much love. 
and there is a hope. You making a difference on people's life. There's a school in Chittagong. My friend Sayyid Harris sponsored the school. And I saw a long line outside. I said, what is this line for? They said it's for using computer. Because we have only seven or eight computers. And there's hundreds of students. So they make a line. And they can use computer only 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Your 12-year-old kids have an iPhone 11. They use 24-7. And these kids use computer for 10 minutes. Sorry, 30 minutes. And they have to make a line from morning till night. Because they want to learn. They want to learn. Yeah. I can see the pictures. And there's a water pump is right there. You know. We talk about. Islam. Five pillars of Islam, Namaz, Ruza, Zakat, Hajj. And this holy month of Ramadan, and especially the last 10 days, was the, been told to give. You will be rewarded 10 or 100 and 1,000 times more. Now we are luckily, we didn't plan to have our fundraising on the last 10 days of month of Ramadan. But Alhamdulillah, it just happened. So please, open your wallet and give me some money. Because money will make a difference in their life. My friends, call me, text me on my cell number. Most of you have 206-437-8911. 206-437-8911. Eight nine one one, and tell me your pledge, so I can tell all these people. These kids are watching, and they told me many times, "Sir, आप बैठ नहीं छोड़िएगा, आप अनवार खान का साथ नहीं छोड़िएगा." I want to recognize few names, my friends who donated money earlier, Abdul Qaja. Asad Fazi, Abdul Habib, Jamil Bhai, Shafiq Sheikh, Samad Foundation, Ms. Ba Mahmoodi, I'll even tell Abdul Qaja donated several times, 2,000, 1,000. Asad Fazi donated 500, Abdul Habib, 450. Jamil Bhai, Sayyid Jamil, 5,000. Shafiq Sheikh, 2,511. Samad Foundation, 10,000. Mizma Mahmoodi, 750. Kramran Haqqani, 10. Jamil Ahmed, another 50. Aftab Faruqi, my dear friend, always there for me, 5,000. Munir Rizvi, 250. Abdul Khaja again, 1,000. Javed Bhai, 10,000. Yusuf Khan, 500. Abdul Hai Waqas, 1,000. Omar Rizvi, 500. Sajid Hassan, 50. Zainab Junejo, 200. Nasir Junejo, my dear friend, 2,200. Rashid Hamid 4,415, Avaz Jafri Bhai $100, Faik Sheikh 500, Shamila Khan 500, Ben Arvin $100, Asma Basha $50, Taslim Ahmad and Saima Rizvi 2,040, Muhammad Aman 250, Hamad Hashmi 150, Sarah Ahad Ahmad 1,000. Neha 160, Vakas Rafiq 500, Jamil Bhai again 53, Mina Zamij Brown 212, 
and Murad 1000. So Alhamdulillah, we raised over $71,300. I need, I need for you guys, please, please send your pledges. Text me. Text me. This is the one of the best time. You can give money. And your money, you see, your money is going for a great cause. Amazing cause. You're making a difference. Everybody live for himself. The beauty about life, once you learn to live for others, the joy of and happiness you will get, I cannot describe. You already know. Most of our community is extremely generous, extremely giving. But unfortunately, we didn't know forgotten people formerly known as the stranded Pakistanis. So out of sight, out of mind. We don't hear them, about them. So we didn't do big fundraising for them. Other big organization we support and cherish. And we should because they have the exposure. These little tiny organization doing wonders. With the little tiny money what you give, they're making a difference for one school for the whole year to educate $20,000. $20,000. Six, seven, eight, nine hundred kids get educated for $20,000? And they become doctors, engineers, chemists, pharmacists. Amazing. Because they don't care that their schools are not fancy. They don't care that they don't have decent clothes. They're desperate to get education. They are desperate to get out of the camps. And they will. They will. Because they have a drive. But they will get sooner if we help them. If we get involved. If we help them. They will get out sooner. They will get out sooner. And please... Help them. You know, there's a man, few people made a difference in my life. Give always good advice. And I like to bring him on the screen so he can say a few words. You know, people say, Satka Jariya is not only giving money. There's 17 others, other ways you can give Satka Jariya. 17 others way. And this guy, not only give money, he follow all those 17 other Satka Jariya. He teaches me, agar kuch nahi ho, dua padlo, dua diya karo. He always give me advice. He give other people advice. That's also Satka Jariya. Whenever I see him, he gives me the big smile. That's also Satka Jariya. He helps all night, day, and sometimes, most of the time, he say, don't use my name. That also Satka Jariya. He gives time. People give money, but people don't give time. He gives his time. That's also Satkai Jariya. He's very listened to patiently. Sometimes I get angry and upset. And he's very patient. That's also Satkai Jariya. He reminds me all the time. Don't lose the hope. That's also Satkai Jariya. 
He always talks softly. He never raised voice. That's also Satkai Jariya. You know, one time I was telling and complaining. He said, Rizwan, just forgive them. That's also Satkai Jariya. You know, this man is a blessing in the sky for me. I just met him, met 10 years ago. And he's like an older brother to me. And a friend, an older brother, and an advisor. So, and this community respect him and love him. Javed Bhai, you know, please say a few words. Yes, to our audience. It is one I do not deserve this. Uh, this again, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay. The only I would say very few words. I'm not a person of long, uh, <laughs> words. Uh, so, first of all, I want to really, I'm really encouraged by people like Dilruba, Nashad, and Abdul. Okay, they're doing an awesome job. Okay, I have got my own four kids, and they are like our kids. Okay, so uh, Allah Allah has blessed us to be, to give. Okay, so I don't, you know, the reason I, you know, reason we all give is to for the Allah's blessing. Okay, so, so thanks to Anwar Bhai, he has provided us the platform to give to the people of Obeth, or to the Bangladesh people. By the way, my ancestors came from Bihar. My ancestors also migrated to East Pakistan. Okay. My ancestors were lucky that we left long time ago. Otherwise, we, me and my family could be part of it. Okay. So it's just unfortunate that you know, some people were left behind and they're not taken care of. Okay. Uh, where I am today is, is the blessing of Allah and education. Okay. And I think education is a game changer. Uh, I, and be, be, you know, so my, my advice to all of my friends living in Seattle, listening to me is give and give more. Okay. And whatever you have is not yours, okay? Whatever wealth I have is not mine. I'm, I'm basically a custodian of the wealth that Allah has given me, okay? So my my advice would be that, and especially for Microsoft people, and you know, you can double down. You can double down with Microsoft contribution, okay? This is, this is one of the most worthy cause I support, okay? Uh, there is nothing, you know, and education, in my opinion, will get them out. Okay. Now, Beth, in the last three or four years, have been focused on education. And you have seen the three wonderful kids, Dilruba, Nashad, and Abdul, how they have done it. Okay. Now, once they have done, it's, you're not only helping one person, you are helping the whole family, and they in turn will help the community. So I would just, just close it by saying during this Ramaz month of Ramadan, be more generous than you would be. Okay. Asalaamu Alaikum. Thank you, Javed Bhai. Thank you. You know, as I said, Anwar Bhai, my friends will not let me down. So, Alhamdulillah, my friend to start texting and saying that they will donate. You know, it's not about raising money for underprivileged people. If we do not recognize their pain and suffering, then we will not be able to give out 100%. I would request to you guys, to all of you, please close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes. And imagine, just imagine that you and your family is in that situation. Close your eyes for a few minutes. And just imagine that you and your family is in that situation. Your mother is living underneath of the stairs. Your children are running around barefoot. You don't have 
attached bathroom. You have to go middle of the night outside. And now open your eyes and thank God and say, thank God that you're living in a nice home, in a nice place. Just thank God. Just thank. You're not special that you are living a good life and they are not special that they are living a bad life. Authentic Hadith says, the poor will enter into the paradise 500 years before the rich. And those are good rich. Poor will enter into the paradise 500 years before the rich. And my dear friends, please, Donate. If you pledge, double your pledge. Give more. Because if you do business with God, you never lose money. You know, when I was a little kid, growing up in Karachi, I see all my name and friends are rich. And I could never understood why they are rich. Because they are businessmen. They are rich. Didn't, didn't, couldn't figure out for a long time why they are so rich. The beauty about that community that they donate a lot of money. A lot of money. They believe in charity. They believe in doing business with God. So Allah gives them a lot. And whoever believes in that. 0.1% of name and community of Pakistan gives more than 60% of the donation in Pakistan. I'm going to share a story. I was in Chittagong and I'm meeting these, all these guys and one fellow I met. I'm forgetting his name, but the last name was Maimon. And he's been speaking in Urdu pretty fluently. I say, you speak very good Urdu. He said, I born in Pakistan. I lived there for 10 years. And then we moved to Chittagong. My dad has a business. And he passed away. And now I'm an accountant. But he left a big land. And I want to do something. That's why I'm hanging around with Anwar Khan. When I came and I shared my passion that I want to do one day with the disabled children and orphan children's house with Obat. Later on, he sent me a text that he already started a school for orphan school. The land which his father left for him. He could have sold it because his father has no business. That's the only wealth his dad had. So I wonder, you know, Allah blessed us so much. So much. Here's the guy. Has parent lost all his business, all the business. Parents died. And he has a land. And he just have a job. And then he donate that land. Has to be Maimon. He was, he was a Maimon. He taught me a lesson. He taught me a lesson. Good person. The wealth, what we see, we adore, we enjoy, we love it. We're all going to leave behind. We're all going to leave behind. One time Javed Bhai told me a story about Alexander the Great. 
He said, when I die, my coffin should be carried by doctors and my right hand should be outside the coffin. So minister complains, why shouldn't we carry your coffin? He said, the world should know that I have the best of the best doctors, but they couldn't save me. And I'm leaving my hand outside and I'm going empty handed from this planet. My dear friends, give charity. Give it today while you are alive, while you are talking, while you, while you are listening. Because don't leave your wealth for your children to donate. There was a Sahaba, generous Sahaba. He wrote down in his will. He used to do business with dates. He wrote down in his will and he's asked Prophet Muhammad that peace be upon him. When I die, please distribute all these dates to poor people. So Prophet Muhammad took this job upon himself. And when he is distributed all the dates, he found one rotten date. And he looked at that date and he said, if he wouldn't give him this date with his own hand in his lifetime, he would have get rewarded for more than all the dates he has given. Give charity with your hand. Don't expect and don't leave behind the money so your children can donate. Please. I'm receiving some text messages, so I'm going to say, my dear friend, Kashif just donated or pledged $10,000. May Allah reward him. Shahid Khatri, my dear brother, just pledged $2,000. May Allah reward him. My sweet nephew just donated $5,000 and Microsoft will match $5,000, $10,000. Arif Samad. May Allah reward him. My long term friend, Kamran Salahuddin. Just donated $500. May Allah reward him. Adil Siddiqui. Good friend of mine. Just donated $1,000. May Allah reward him. Amar. This guy, he's everywhere, donated $1,000. May Allah reward him. Shahid Haq, this dear brother, I love him. I love him. He just donated, pledged $1,000. May Allah reward him. My best friend Nasir, who already donated 2200 and his daughter donated 200 He just texted me that he will donate another $1,000. May Allah reward him. <coughs> MashaAllah, I'm getting... Call. I probably already mentioned Murad. He donated one thousand dollars. May Allah reward him. Hamid Mahmood donated fifteen hundred dollars. May Allah reward him.
you know, Furqan, my nephew, he collected among his friends from Mount Lake Terrace Masjid $1,500 and he will donate $500 online donation. May Allah reward him. I don't know, Monica, if you counting, please put it on the screen. Dr. Rizwan Khan, my dear friend, Miraham Nam Dost, Anbar Bhai, younger brother, just pledge $1,000. May Allah reward him. Please, you know, I made up my mind. I have a number in my head. And I will get that number one way or another. Because I'm an eyewitness. And I have to do it. I have no other choice. I cannot die in pain that I didn't do anything. I promise to them. I promise to myself. And I promise to my kids. My daughter Nadia donated $1,000. May Allah reward him, her. My daughter Yasmin donated $1,000. May Allah reward her. Monica, please add, please add up. I'm still waiting for some big donation. I'm still waiting for big donation. And I got one. This amazing couple, Harris and Maryam Sayyid, they donated last year 20000 and they donated again $20,000 today. May Allah reward. That school is running, is doing amazing job. I don't want to forget Kashif. The school is also doing an amazing job. My friends, the money you are spending on these kids, you heard the stories. You are making difference. You are making difference. You are getting these kids, these family out of the camp. And believe me, if we will all unite and help them, every single one of them will get out from the camp. It's just we have to push ourselves a little bit harder. A little bit harder. You know? Because we cannot knowingly, knowingly, can leave them behind. I will donate. Alara will get $50,000. And then, hopefully, either tonight or tomorrow, we can reach our goal to $250,000. I'm looking at my cell phone. If anybody around, oh, my dear friend Abdul Qadir texts me and he say he will donate $1,000. Thank you, Khadir Bhai. Thank you. You know, Mumtaz Malik, 
he promised that he will donate. He always donate good amount of money. And he called and he said, Rizwan, I will donate. So people are calling. People are pledging. As our job is to tell our friends that convey this message to other people, other friends. And I hope so because I'm not techie guy. I think this video is going to be stay online. So we can share this with you and encourage our friends to donate for this noble cause. I'm going to, I'm not going to take much time if you guys. So thank you. Thank you, my friends. And if I forget anybody's name, please forgive me. My friend, my nephew, Tabish and Harris also donated online. I don't know how much. <coughs> so if I forget any anyone, please forgive me. This is a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will get recognition from him. I'm just thanking you as a friend. The reward will you will receive from him. And thank you, my friends. You did not let us down. I totally and completely appreciate it. You guys, whoever supported me morally, mentally, financially, I owe it to you guys. I personally owe it to all of you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rizwan Bay, Jazakallah Khair, thank you so much. Um, I, I, I want you to know that, and, and, and I want you, and I want Abul Qasim and our other guests to know, and Anwar Bay to know that, mashallah, the people are responding. Um, the numbers are coming in from multiple channels, text to give uh, through the online OBAT website, as well as they're texting you and it'll take us inshallah we will we will have the final numbers shared later today but it's just a remarkable 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 experience this evening i am truly inspired my family watching inspired yes Rondai. i got one more my friend asif maiman from bay area donated twelve hundred dollars Mashallah. Which Apple will match, it will become $2,400. Yes, mashallah. <laughs> and thank you. Oh, I, I don't want to forget. Please, please, I don't want to, I don't want to forget. I called my friend Nadeem Shirazi in Toronto. And alhamdulillah, he raised several thousand dollars in Toronto for our bath helper. He's my dear, dear friend, Nadeem Shirazi. And he's still raising money in Canada. So my Canadian friends, please contact Nadeem Shirazi and donate Obat Helpers Canada. Please donate over there. They are working side by side with U.S. Obat Helper. So the cause is same and the mission is same. So if you are in Canada, you can donate Obat Helpers Canada and mention into for the refugee camp, a stranded Pakistani or forgotten people's camp. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you, spoke, you spoke so well. I'm just an emotional person. Just go on and on. But you are extremely articulate and, you know, the talent which you have, I wish I would have had, I would, might get double the amount. 
you know, you mentioned you you mentioned Apple, and I can't help but to think of Steve Jobs. One of the things that he said was to achieve anything great, actually great. It's so difficult and so hard that you have to have tremendous passion to achieve it. And if there's anything that came through tonight from the start of Unrubai and his $1,750 and uh, our three amazing guests from the ground and you, Rizwan Bai, and Jawed Bai, who was here earlier, it's passion. Otherwise, everything else in the world is too easy. It's passion that's driving this and the passion of those who are supporting now, who are believing and seeing that yes, we can actually break the poverty cycle and make a difference. Before I forget, I wanna thank Catalina, your staff and Monica. Without their help, we wouldn't be able to, you know, do this program. And you know, <laughs> even though she helped all the time, and she texts me that she will donate hundred dollar. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Your your coworkers are amazing. This is this is this is noble. Uh, this is just great. I don't have words to describe. You know, really, truly. I, I, I just only and only can say thank you. And I'm hoping that we can reach our goal which is my goal is at least to raise $200,000. And inshallah, I know for a fact that when this video will release and people will see, people will donate. Money will come, you know, because people are generous. My friends are generous. They will give money, you know, because now they know how important this causes now they know what obat is doing they're making difference in people's life they're taking them from shanty and and camps and gutter towns to nice places they're giving them life they're giving them hope they're making a difference the one guy get educated the entire family gets out you know i was so happy to see their houses with the drapes and the same shanty, dilapidated room. One corner they are cooking, another corner they are sleeping. It's amazing. It's amazing. May God give long life to my friend Anwar Khan and keep him long healthy life so he can continue before i forget one more thing i just want to mention and dua for this amazing individual i met in dhaka his name is zakwan and brother zakwan in a short period of time he hosted lunch and dinner for my family and he was the backbone of a bad helper and when Anwar Bhai and his wife goes to Canada, they stay in his house. They camp in his house. Every single visitor who visit Dhaka, he hosts them. He takes them around. He helps financially, morally, mentally. He was giving his time and giving Sadqa Jariya. So please, all the people make do dua for him. May Allah place him in Jannat al Fardas. He was an amazing, amazing guy. And it was a great, great loss to Obat. And, you know, we cannot replace him. But I'm, I'm proud that he left behind these young and amazing kids who will try to take his job. Who will try to take his job and keep the momentum alive? So thank you, all my friends. Thank you, you kids. You will see me more often. So, Coming to Bangladesh. There's one by I'm with you. you guys. 
to visit me and I will let you know and I'll keep coming. And as I, you guys ask me to promise, I'm going to promise online, I'm not leave your mentor Anwar Khan, Arubat. I will die before I leaving him. Till my last breath, I will support him. I'm, I will beg for you. I will become a modern beggar. And I'll be no ashamed. I'll have no ashamed going to my friends and family members begging for money for such a great cause. Thank you. And I love you guys all. And please keep me in dua. We love you too, Rizwan. I want to, you know, the, 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 tonight has been an amazing, amazing afternoon, an amazing evening. And, and later tonight, we will make the announcement of the um, uh, goal. I think we're real close to that goal tonight, Rizwan Bay. And um, I want to thank all of our guests and thank Anwar Bay. Anwar Bay, if you have any closing remarks to share, any last words to share. I would like Anwar Bay to close the closing remarks and close this meeting. Please, Anwar Bay. Please, Anwar Bay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbish shayrul sadri wa shayrul amri wa shayrul amtu the middle sani yafqal qawli. May may Allah bless all of you who join hand with us, and a special thanks to Brother Rizwan, Brother Tayyab, Monica and her team, and all our guests from Bangladesh. Really, this is a new process we have gone through is difficult for us the first time we're going this online but again i'm very thankful to rizwan because this was your initiative and you thought about it and we <laughs> stood with you my <laughs> one more comment uh, by looking at these youth i just want to add one thing that now they know that i can do and i can lead so this message we go forward with all other kids in the camp, inshallah, inshallah. And I'm using these kids as a role model and they go different places, talk to the kids and things are going on. So again, thank you very much. And a special thanks for all the donors and supporters who are standing with us. Without your help and support, we cannot meet and we cannot go to the next level of success and excellence inshallah last pray for one pray i always pray for myself but i'm sharing with everyone that in urdu we say that ya allah hamare liye aasaniyan paida kar de aur dusron ke liye aasaniyan paida karne ka zariya bana de this is the prayer when i started from the day when i am praying this and really allah is making things easy for me and also making things easy for all our work. And I am, I'm sure that Allah will continue to use us to help the mankind. Thank you, everybody. Zakallah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.